I'm super excited to be here. Big fan of Circle and Socket. I've been reading through your guys' docs the last few days and yeah, could not be more stoked. So maybe real quick, let's just do a few um, intros. So maybe we'll start with you, Luke, and then we'll pass it to Seamus and then bye bye. Thanks. Thanks, cool horse girl. Um, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Good afternoon, if it's uh, afternoon where you are in the world. Uh, I'm excited to be part of this panel today to talk about USDC Anywhere and what it means for the Minwell community. Um, just by way of introduction, my name is Luke Youngblood and I'm a founding contributor to Moonwell. Um, I'm CEO of a company called Lunar Labs that is a technical contributor. We build the beautiful app that you use when you go to the Moonwell website. Um, so I'm really excited to talk to uh, my friends from Circle and Socket here today and just share more information about what USDC Anywhere is and why we built the feature. It's great to be here. Awesome. Hey, everyone. My name is Seamus Noonan. I'm on the business development team at Circle. I lead all of our uh, blockchain partnerships as well as our go-to-market motions for our cross-chain transfer protocol. Um, so cool horse, cool horse girl and Luke, thanks for having me. I'm really excited um, and I'll pass it along. Hey, folks. This is Webho. I also go by VC. I'm one of the founders here at Socket Lab. And, you know, we've been working to kind of abstract away all the chains to kind of make it seamless for people to move value across chains. And USDC anywhere resonates with that mission so much. I'm, I'm a big believer of kind of like this kind of UX and also like a pretty big user of Moonwell. So pretty excited to chat. Lovely. Yeah, welcome, guys. So um, we have a tweet pinned uh, that sort of gets into the USDC Anywhere feature. I'd love to start with that. Um, maybe, yeah, Luke, can you kick us off from a Moonwell perspective? Just a high level overview of what is USDC Anywhere? Sure, absolutely. So first of all, USDC Anywhere leverages Circle's cross-chain transfer protocol. And it allows you to transfer USDC between the top six Ethereum networks. Uh, so we are leveraging this feature in the Moonwell protocol to allow anyone to easily supply and borrow USDC on any of these six networks. Uh, so for those of you that are familiar with, you know, bridging and past have bridged in the past, you know, you might be familiar with sort of the pain of, of uh, you know, having a coin on one network, but not being able to use an app on another network, right? And you're like, how do I get my USDC to this other network so I can maybe buy an NFT or play a game or do something on this other network? We really wanted to solve this problem in a first-class way by just making it super easy for people to supply and borrow on any network, any of the top Ethereum networks, including all the layer twos that you know and love, like Optimism, Base, and Arbitrum, and others, uh, as well as the top layer ones like Mainnet, you know, Avalanche, and Polygon. Um, and we're also excited about this expanding to other ecosystems like Solana in the near future. I think CCTP is coming to Solana. But um, you know, some of the reasons why this is really game changing. If if you think back to like the early days of the internet, and I wrote about this in a pinned post on my profile. Um, about networks, if you guys want to read about it. Um, but in the early days of the internet, you know, everyone was disconnected from each other. You might be on an office or a school network, but if you didn't have like a T1 line, which was a really expensive broadband connection, you know, you might not have been able to send email from your office to another office. Uh, but eventually, you know, we've got all these local area networks connected by the internet and people could send email and information to each other. And I feel like CCTP and what USDC is building here, what Circle is building here with CCTP is actually enabling like this, this kind of internet of value, right? Where we can now transfer value between networks. And we don't have to think about like, oh, my, this app I want to use is on Polygon, but I have my value on base. Like, how do I do that? Now I can just um, transfer that value. I can just borrow USDC there and I can very easily use an app or uh, buy an NFT on a different network. And I think this is really game changing because being able to transfer value between networks is something we just couldn't do until CCTP was available. Um, and without having to use clunky bridges and, and you know, sort of trust the security of the bridges. So I'm just really excited about that. And we can talk more about the use cases. I think there's a lot of um, exciting use cases here that are enabled by this. Yeah, definitely. I can see use cases for both like very, you know, entrenched crypto people, uh, even like 
probably many of us on this space, probably myself included, um, about getting from one uh, network to the other. And also people new to crypto, you know, imagine trying to explain to someone, yeah, I know that you have this on optimism, but you want to use this on Arbitrum, try to do it. It's, it's really daunting. Let's talk about some of those potential use cases. Can we just lay them out? Um, maybe by number even. Yeah, sure. I just at a high level, you know, in my thread, I talk a little bit about this on the USDC anywhere thread, also in my pins posts, but you know, let's say for example, um, a new game launches like the parallel trading card game. Um, I don't know if you got to play that. It's a fun game. Uh, it launched on base. Um, but you might not have, uh, ETH or USDC to try that game. And so being able to simply withdraw USDC or borrow USDC directly to that network, um, and just start using the game in a few minutes without thinking about like, you know, how do I bridge? What bridge do I use? Um, or how do I buy a token on a central exchange and withdraw it there? Um, we just wanted to make that super easy. Another one is just NFT collections. You know, if an NFT collection is minted on another network, and you don't have anything to buy it with, very easy to just simply borrow USDC and buy that um, NFT in a few minutes or mint that collection in a few minutes. And I think there's a whole bunch of these where you might want to try a new social networking app, a new um, decentralized social app on a different network, but you just need a few dollars to like play with it. Um, and I think this is the really the use cases we want to enable: <laughs> games, NFTs, trading, uh, meme coins. Even you know, if you want to just hundred dollars to you know ape into the latest meme coin, like why shouldn't you just be able to borrow that and do it in minutes as opposed to having to figure out how to bridge your coins? Huge, yeah, that's. That's so cool. Um, maybe let's move into some of the technical foundation. So this is CCTP and then also Socket. Babov, can you go first on this one? Yeah, of course. Um, happy to speak quickly about it. I think CCTP enables you know users and developers to kind of like build stuff on top, which is like the coolest thing, right? Uh, which is what we do at Socket, right? So we leverage the attestations. Uh, that the API provides or like CCTV provides and, and kind of like allow um, and build this like kind of like orchestration layer on top that allows developers to integrate with CCTV even more seamlessly and kind of like uh, handhold the integration almost, right? Um, I, I think a bunch of people are using C uh, CCTP via socket, uh, enabling like, you know, seamless orchestration uh, along with CCTP other stations allowing people to move USDC across chains pretty seamlessly. Moonwell integration is a good example of this. If you guys haven't checked it out already, you definitely should. It's, it's, it's pretty sick. Yeah. And if I could add on to that by Bob, um, it's really awesome working with the socket APIs. What the socket APIs allowed us to do when we built this feature was, you know, normally when you, if you use CCTP as an end user, you have like a two-step process, right? Where you, and it's all handled by circle, but you have to call, you have to burn your USDC on one network. And then you actually have to like mint it on another network. And both of those will have a transaction fee associated with them. And it requires, you know, multiple steps in your wallet, like MetaMask or Coinbase wallet or whatever wallet you use. Um, what the socket uh, service allowed us to do is to basically remove that final minting step because the socket relayers actually will mint on behalf of the end user. And so it removes extra wallet steps so that now all users have to do is sign an approval and then the first, the burn on one network. And then a few minutes later, the socket relayers will just automatically mint on the target network for us. So it saves our user steps and it makes it a much more user-friendly experience. And also I feel like the socket team has a really strong bar for security and we wanted to make sure that this was really secure architecture. So. Uh, you guys have done a lot of the really nice things behind the scenes, like having immutable contracts uh, that, so we have confidence that like when we're sending our user funds there, they're not going to get rugged. Uh, I think that's really important. Love to hear it, man. Uh, I think just to kind of add one more thing, I think, you know, like this side orchestration layer on top of CCDP allows people to even do things like this where you can bridge USDC as well as get some like need to matic, the NB or whatever you need on the decision chain to kind of like do 10 to 15 more transactions, which is like super useful. So users can, you know, kind of like get started and not be like blocked. Uh, stuff like this uh, helps 
you know, make the UX so much better. Absolutely. Yeah. I forgot to mention that I, we integrated with your feature called refuel. Um, this also helped us make the feature super user friendly. So like how many of you guys have experienced this painful thing It's happened to me multiple times where you bridge your USDC or your token to another network. And then you want to do something with it. And you're like, you don't have any ETH. So you actually can't pay gas on the other network. And you're just kind of like stuck there. Now you can't bridge it back. You're stuck and you have to go like buy ETH and like on a central exchange and withdraw it. It's such a pain or get your friend to send you some so you can get unstuck. Um, we integrated with refill, which is really game changing because now what we actually do in our front end on the Moonwell app, we'll look at your balance of your ETH balance on the remote network. And if you already have ETH, we know you're good. So we won't turn on refill. But if you don't have any ETH on the remote network you're bridging to or you're transferring to, um, we will enable refill and that way you'll be charged a small fee by the socket relayers, but you'll get your USDC along with a small amount of ETH or the native token like Avalanche or Matic, if it's on AVAX or, or Matic networks or AVAX or Matic on Avalanche and Polygon networks. And then that way you'll be able to do a few swaps or do a few transactions when your funds arrive without you having to think about like, okay, how, how do I acquire gas tokens? Um, we think this is also a really awesome user-friendly feature and really makes it much more easy to use um, for you know, the vast majority of people that are just using a new network for the first time. Yeah, it's all about the simplification. Um, cool. So this means USDC anywhere sort of has to choose um, like a liquidity hub to uh, draw on when you're going from one chain to another. Why, why was base chosen for that liquidity hub? I mean, I think that those of us that are building the base ecosystem, we really understand that, you know, Coinbase is making it super easy for base to be your on-chain hub for all your value. Um, you'll be able to, you know, you can already do this. You can just withdraw USDC for no fees from Coinbase. So it becomes this really easy on-ramp to just getting your liquidity uh, from Coinbase, whether it's coming from a bank account, a debit card, or what have you. And then uh, just being able to use it with all the base apps, it just makes sense for base to be the liquidity hub. Uh, we have a strong belief that base is going to grow to be tens of billions of TDL this cycle. And so, you know, we, it makes sense to have that liquidity where all these apps are going to exist that has the best, you know, central exchange on and off ramps. Makes sense to me too. Cool. Um, and then Vebov, really quick before we sort of move on to talk about CCTP more, um, we're excited about USCC, right? And then Luke even mentioned using some refuel so you can make sure you have ETH as well um, <laughs> when you're moving around. How, can socket technology be leveraged to support um, additional asset, assets? Like you could do ETH anywhere, something else anywhere? Absolutely. That's the end goal for us, really. Uh, the, end goal is, uh, the end goal for us is like, you know, people should come to Moonwell, hit deposit and USDC uh, or any other asset that they are holding, um, you know, across chains can be like one click deposit right into Moonwell, right? Uh, that's the end goal. People shouldn't really care about like the boundaries of chains or be kind of like uh, held back because of it. Uh, and we are kind of like continuously building stuff around uh, this to make this happen, right? So. I think fuel is one of the things we've chatted about already. It's it's super popular. People use it all the time. Then we have this thing called socket scan, which is you can think about it like ether scan, but for between the blocks. So just like how ether scan allows you to see what's happening inside a block on a particular blockchain, socket scan allows you to see all bridge transfers across chains, right? So these are bridge transfers that are happening on socket, not on socket. So the CCTP ones really anything that's happening between the blocks, it can be grabbed there. So, I mean, what I'm really trying to get that is our entire mission is to make USDC anywhere possible and like so much more. One day you'll just kind of come in, hit the deposit and you'll just kind of like pay with, you know, any asset, any chain, uh, it, it, it really wouldn't matter. Really? Yeah, we love this vision. I, and actually, just to uh, chime in here, we're going to launch ETH Anywhere as a fast follow to this feature. That'll probably be the next thing you see is just making it easy for people to transfer ETH to any of these networks using the socket APIs and backends as well. Um, so we're excited about that. But um, obviously, like Circle is is sort of paving the way here with their 
uh, with their mint and burn architecture. And I think Circle has obviously invested a ton into this effort. And so they're the furthest along in terms of having their assets supported on multiple networks already. Um, but other assets like ETH, it only makes sense to make it easy for people to get gas tokens. And in the future, I definitely believe that, you know, it's going to become more like the internet, right? You don't have to worry if your friend is on Verizon and you're on AT&T. You can just, you know, transfer data to and from each other. And that's the way that it should be. All these networks should sort of feed into the background and people shouldn't have to think about like, I'm on mainnet and my friend is on, you know, base or something. We should just be able to use these apps and not really think too much about it. Abstraction, 100%. Um, cool. Now, Seamus, I want to move to you. Um, talk about Circle's cross-chain transfer protocol. So this is CCTB. For those unfamiliar, really quick, can you just explain base level what CCTP is? And Eli Five would actually would actually be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And I I saw in our show notes of like, can you explain it to me? Like I'm five years old, so I, I'm going <laughs> to take it back a little high level here. All right, so bear with me. So channeling my inner young self, um, I, I always thought teleporting machines were so cool, like seeing it on Star Trek. And let's just say for for example purposes, teleporting machines were real. And how I'd explain this is, let's say there was a specific teleporting machine that had a standard. And that standard was just for sending coffee. So I could put in my teleporting machine six ounces of coffee. And it was up to this standard that everyone else agreed this is that standard. And then I also saw that Luke had that same standard. So I could teleport that six ounces of coffee to Luke anywhere in the world. And that coffee would essentially disappear on my end, but it would appear on his end. And let's say someone else has that standard. Luke can decide to then send eight ounces of coffee, two ounces of coffee, whatever it is, it would disappear on his end, reappear on the recipient's end. At a really high level, that's what CCTP is. And bringing it back to like real world examples, the coffee in this instance or medium of, of, of value or exchange is USDC. And that standard for the teleporting is actually the blockchains in which USDC is natively issued on. So USDC is issued on 15 different blockchains now. And the whole reason why we wanted to roll this out last um, April was how can we make it dead simple and safe and secure for users to bring USDC from one supported chain to another? And if you looked at the existing options available, it was, you know, do I have to go to an exchange that has that specific uh, blockchain support? Do I bridge it? And inherently with those options, you're presenting the user with options around risk, right? I, as a user, have to go and educate myself on, okay, what are my risks if I leave this USDC on one chain to bring it to another and then go do DeFi, anything I want? But inherently, I, I always have to go back, right? I have to go back to redeem that. And what we wanted to do was implement this teleporting feature, which is through a mint and burn functionality, to allow users to do just that, to bring their USDC from one chain to another, never have to worry about where it's where where was that USDC tucked away with an IOU. Um, and then once they're on that new chain, users don't have to think, you know, what do what like, do I have to go back anywhere else? It's it's forward moving. So we're really excited about this. I would say as a whole and in, in how we architected this is as the issuer of USDC. We have, and the magic of how it gets teleported is the attestation reports. So we can see when mint and burn, what mints and burns occur to ensure that there's no double spend problem or, you know, someone's not minting USDC out of thin air. So we've made this open and permissionless, and it's been incredible to see the adoption from dApps, from wallets, from SDKs to start integrating this. And we have some really exciting milestones to share soon, but I would say that that's, that's my high level pitch and we can go into more specific details. Um, but, the, but the high level pitch on CCTP. Amazing cool. explanation. If I can add on a little bit, I yeah, think please. that the security is really paramount of the solution. And that's what is so impressive about CCTP. You know, in the past, when you had to bridge to another network, you often had to lock your tokens in some kind of a bridge contract, and then you could use them on this other network for weeks or months in some DeFi protocol. But your tokens were always at risk in that bridge contract. And those became large honeypots where, you know, billions of dollars have been stolen from bridges in the last couple of years. So I think that everyone kind of realized like, hey, this is really insecure and it's not a good architecture because my tokens are at risk forever, you know, while they're in this, this bridge contract. And so 
by developing this you know new architecture where you can teleport tokens um it actually changes the security model significantly to now your tokens are only at risk for a few minutes while they're in flight or being teleported as opposed to being at risk forever and so it's a huge uh upgrade to security there yeah absolutely and and one other thing to add too which is really unique about this is there's zero slippage fees so whatever you send is whatever you get so just going back to the coffee example you know minus network fees if i send six ounces of coffee that's what you can expect on the other side so that's that's like we're trying to usher in a new era of i, I think luke you had said that like you know, users shouldn't have to care if it's Verizon or AT&T and, and Cool Horse Girl. I was thinking about your grandma in this example in the beginning, right? Like she might not understand going from base to Ethereum to Solana, but she might understand Zelle or Venmo of like, hey, I just got an in-app notification that I have $10 sent to me and I can settle that in my bank account. That's exactly where we're trying to head. And I think that was the vision behind this is how do we enable this for end users at scale to be able to do this anywhere in the world? And we're getting there. We're, we're slowly getting there. There's still things that have to happen on the UI, the UX integrations. Um, but that's the future state I think we're really excited about and we'll get there eventually. Um, but yeah, we're, we're really excited with progress to date. Yeah, that is so cool. Um, that makes a lot of sense. I did Venmo my grandma the, the other day. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So I want to talk about a little bit about the broader implications of CCTV. When Luke brought up that example that really stuck with me, it was, um, you know, some use Verizon, some use AT&T, and I don't care and I don't know what my friends are using. And I don't, I don't care to know, <laughs> I guess, maybe more importantly. So how does that apply to CCTP for DeFi and like the on-chain economy as, as a whole? What does the future actually look like? Maybe you can start with just interconnectivity, that thing that Luke's talking about. Yeah, totally. And I would say, Luke, feel free to chime in here. And a couple other things, too. Um, one is just to tease out, we're really excited. So we are expanding um, the routes. So we are actually going to be supporting Solana tomorrow. So we're really excited about that. That's going to take this um, to support for eight different things with 56 different unique routes. So in terms of like interconnectivity and secure transfer of value across ecosystems, this is significantly up-leveling the playing field in terms of allowing users to come where they are now into, say, Base or any other blockchain with USDC. And with the support of Solana, us adding su Solana support, CCTP will have coverage for about 96, 97% of all circulating natively issued USDC. So that inherently is going to open up so many floodgates in terms of liquidity and, and just new use cases. And with it being free and permissionless and open, users can start to say, hey, you know, like Socket might integrate a signing system or something to say, hey, instead of having users to click two or three times, we can abstract that away. And that's what we're excited about too. So whether it's DeFi, you know, in having a native asset USDC is that trading pair or is that, you know, sole source of liquidity and it's not fragmented with, you know, different instances of, of wrapped USDC, Users no longer have to have that, okay, there's six different instances of USDC. Which one should I be using? Which one am I safe with? And we want to continue to abstract that away. So that's what we're really excited about. Um, and, and I would say just, you know, we're going to continue to develop with CCTP. And we have some um, really exciting milestones in terms of volume we'll be sharing later this week. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been amazing to date. And we're really excited to see the future ahead with all of our partners. Yeah, I'll, I'll add on a little bit. Um, it's amazing to see the progress there. I'm excited about Solana support coming soon. Um, and I think a lot of the use cases you're going to see are going to be, uh, you know, not just some that I mentioned earlier, like uh, games, NFTs, uh, meme coins and others, but uh, you're going to start to see apps that look a lot like Venmo that are built using these technologies under the cover, you know. So if you just want to send value between your friends to settle a, a restaurant bill you split or something, um, that's going to be a use case you see that it's enabled by um, cheap on-chain transfers. You know, if uh, once we have things like paymasters that can pay gas fees for users, you could imagine a version of Venmo that works on base natively that allows you to just simply send USDC without any fees uh, between wallets. Also, I think payments are just going to be huge. Um, just being able to buy merch and things like that online. Uh, 
I, I think it's going to create a lot of new types of online e-commerce businesses where people are just like, Hey, you know, we want to be like the Amazon or Temu of, uh, of, you know, online commerce, and we want to use USDC as our native currency. I think we're going to start to see more and more of those in the near future. And another thing I wanted to mention is just that, you know, the technology is still very early. I mean, it still takes between, you know, one minute and, a, and 15 or 20 minutes to send value between networks. And so in many ways, we're sort of still in the dial up era, but this will change over time. And I'm sure that Circle's figuring out ways to improve the transfer speed and to make things faster. Um, you know, just like going from dial-up to broadband, pretty soon we'll be in a world where we can send value, you know, faster than just, uh, you know, a couple seconds on locally on base or a few minutes across CCTP networks. But I do think that we'll figure out ways to make this, you know, really fast and seamless in the future. Very cool. Um, okay, quick question from, from me, actually. It's not really fully on our outline here. Um, but when I was reading through sort of CCTP docs, um, it's one thing that's really evident um, that's sort of different from the past is that it's a burn and mint mechanism, right? Instead of a lock and wrap. Um, so really quick, Seamus, can you explain why this is important? So I think it, it helps with security, right? You can't, uh, you're actually burning, so you're not getting wrapped versions of things. Why is that, why does that matter? Yeah, absolutely. And, and Luke covered this a bit, but essentially the old way and, or, or other traditional ways is it's basically like an IOU, right? So if I lock my, my USDC up on Ethereum and I bridge it to a new blockchain and it's USDC.e, that wrapped USDC is actually not supported by Circle. And Circle does issue USDC natively on different blockchains. And when we issue it natively, in our terms of service, that USDC is always redeemable for dollars. So that's really important for users to know. Now, in, these, in this instance of a mint and burn functionality, what we're actually doing is, <clears throat> since we have those attestations to show when USDC is, is minted, meaning fiat, if fiat is converted into USDC or burned, that fiat is, is, is burned back into, I'm sorry, the, 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 the reverse. Anyways, what we're doing here is with CCTP is we're allowing folks to ping our attestation API to see that happen and the user signing off on this. And some dApps may abstract this away, but why this is such a step level change is if I'm a user, I have 10 USDC on Avalanche, I want to send it to base. Avalanche is the source chain. So I'm saying, hey, yes, this is my wallet. This is my 10 USDC I want to send. And they'll say in some pop-ups, do you want to then send it to base? When I confirm that, I go about burning that USDC on Avalanche while it is getting um, minted onto base. And us, Circle as that sole issuer, is the only counterparty that can say, yes, this burn did happen. Yes, this mint did happen. And once it's minted, minted on that new chain, right, on the, on the base chain, there's no law, it's no longer locked away. So there's no other previous events I need to go back to. And what Luke was saying in the beginning too, if I do wrap an asset, I am keeping that asset. I'm trusting that bridge or that counterparty to do the right thing. But it does become a honeypot. So when you see more and more value on a specific chain where it's locked, it's a honeypot for exploits or, or bridging attacks where more and more bad actors might try and come in and, and compromise that. So me as a user, if I'm locking it up through a locking key, I have to always think about that. I have to be monitoring that counterparty, understanding is there any risk there? Um, have there been any security audits on that protocol? Whereas now this mint and burn functionality, it is truly teleporting. So users no longer have to keep that burden in the back of their mind saying, I, will, I hope this protocol is doing the right thing. So I'd say that's the, the big advantage. And we offer this type of functionality in the Circle Mint account, but that's only available for businesses. So we wanted to have a way for end users to be able to utilize the same functionality in the broader ecosystem. And that's why we made it permissionless to allow any of these, these dApps to integrate this either at the wallet level, centralized exchange, dApps, anyone can integrate this. And, and we're really excited to see the adoption. Yeah, if I can add on a little bit there, um, as an end user of CCTP, and I've been using it for several months now, um, I know it's always a little bit scary the first time you use it because you're like, wait, I'm sending my USDC to the burn address. Like what's going on here, right? And you're just worried a little bit, like 
Am I going to get my tokens back on the other network, like when they get minted? But the, the beauty of the architecture of what Circle's designed here is that you don't really have to trust that the, the app that burned your tokens is going to give you anything of value because the attestation that Seamus is talking about is really the, at, the proof that you burned the coins is all you need, right? So as long as you can prove to the Circle API that you burned the coins on one network, then they'll mint them for you on another network. And, and so it really doesn't matter, you know, that this allow this is kind of a beautiful design because it allows thousands of apps to basically burn USDC. And then you don't necessarily have to worry about if the app is a bad actor or not. Right. Um, because in a worst case scenario, God forbid that they, they didn't send the, the request to circle API, you could prove with that out of station and get your, your USDC back from circle. So I think it's a really beautiful design because you don't have to trust all these apps. You, you just uh, trust the attestation server at circle. That's actually what stands out most to me um, about CCTP. So yeah, exciting stuff. Um, let's move on to USDC. So why did we go with USDC anywhere instead of, you know, insert asset anywhere? Um, what role does USDC pay play in the base ecosystem? Maybe we'll start with. Or right, who did you want to start with? Did I start there? Go get them, Luke. All right, cool. Yeah, so, um, I mean, USDC, obviously, and Circle has had a strong partnership with Coinbase for many years now. And uh, it only makes sense for uh, Coinbase and Circle to partner uh, and make sure that USDC is the most liquid stable coin on base. And things like, you know, supporting native withdrawals to and from Coinbase with no fees um, make it really, really easy to support and have really deep liquidity. Also, just wanted to mention that the Moonwell protocol was part of a pilot with Circle earlier last year um, in December that kicked off. Uh, we're one of the few protocols on base that actually has USDC incentives live. Um, that's a pilot project, but we, we've always been, you know, really closely aligned with Coinbase community and with the base community, and it it just made sense. Also, just to mention, the technology itself is quite a bit ahead of other assets. You know, for example. There are a lot of other assets that are multi-chain now or becoming multi-chain, um, different versions of stable coins and uh, things like wrapped Bitcoin and other things like that. However, very few of them have automated this minting and burning process. And in many cases, the minting of assets on multiple networks is done with multi-sigs by humans in a very manual way. So like, you know, if you want to go get a uh, native asset minted on some other network, you might actually have to talk to a central exchange or a custodian, and you might have to mint you know, some large amount. It wouldn't be available to retail investors or just users of the base network. And so um, you know, Circle and USDC anywhere, or sorry, Circle and CCTP are just much further along in, in terms of technology than these other assets are. I'm sure they will catch up. And I hope that many other assets out there do copy this mint and burn architecture because it's a great design. Uh, but it just takes time for for all these uh, multi-chain assets to kind of evolve and support that. Yeah, and the only thing I'd add there too is is USDC the the role it plays in base is all for developers as well, right? So any developers that maybe might be a Web two developer coming on chain, there are certain primitives and principles that they want to integrate at at the foundational level. One is obviously building on a, a safe and secure asset, which native USDC is. And, and it allows those developers to say, hey, from day one, we know the foundation that we're building is on this native asset and it's not a wrapped instance. And, and we know exactly who the counterparty is for issuing this. Um, and then Circle is rolling out uh, and we have a suite of uh, services as well, Web3 services as well. That's making it a lot easier for these Web2 developers to start abstracting away all of the complexities behind crypto as we know it. So abstracting seed phrases, um, you know, uh, uh, using USDC as gas payments, things like that. So that's what we're really excited about as well. And that's, I would say, one of the pivotal roles is, is the developer adoption and the availability for developers to build on top of USDC from day one, whether it's a new DEX, whether it's an NFT platform, a trading platform, um, you know, you can use it as a base pair, as the payment method. There's a lot of different use cases there that we're really excited about. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to get by Bob's perspective um, from the socket side. Are you seeing any Web2 application developers that are uh, very interested in, you know, like leveraging USDC and some of these technologies to kind of build Web2 apps? 
we often, you know, in the Web3 space, we, we don't pay a lot of attention to what people are building in like FinTech and other things, but I'm curious to hear uh, your experience. That's a solid question, actually. I was going to kind of like comment on this um, a few minutes ago, but I think, I think what USDC has done has kind of like uh, moved the ecosystem forward by a mile, right? Because if you think about it, USDC technically does not lie on any single blockchain. It lies across different blockchains, right? So USDC is uh, abstracted, right? And if you look at it, almost all of the Interop deck uh, is about abstraction, right? And that's like one of the biggest kind of like use cases we go out with and we talk to like, you know, TradSci, uh, we have two companies that have like, you know, serious adoption, uh, who are looking to kind of like integrate into the web three rails. For them, what they really want is this like abstracted experience such that they can serve the largest majority of audience uh, across chains. They don't want to integrate Solana, they don't want to integrate Ethereum, they don't want to integrate Base, they don't want to integrate Optimism. They want to integrate the entire kind of like ecosystem, right? And um, doing things the way USDC is doing uh, makes it much easier for these the two companies to uh, kind of integrate with the rails that we are building uh, on this side of the world, right? Um, we are talking to a bunch of like really, really big enterprise, TradFi, Web2 projects and kind of like helping them understand on how they can leverage this tech and allow people to, for example, uh, as, uh, as we were talking about before, kind of like, let's say Venmo integrates USDC anywhere kind of thing. Uh, it would be so seamless for people to deposit and withdraw from the bank accounts and kind of like our people send USDC from US to Africa, to India, to whatnot, right? Uh, so I think there are like so many conversations happening, uh, um, you know, um, where like we are chatting with these players and trying to help them on board and kind of leverage this tech. But I think um, it, it feels pretty nice that on the tech side of things, we are, we are almost there. Uh, and it's just about now bridging and kind of making people understand how this thing works and how they can integrate it. So things are looking very positive, guys. Yeah, great. Um, then finally, I'll give everyone sort of an opportunity to double click on something Vaybov mentioned quickly there. Um, beyond the technicals of USDC and why it facilitates, you know, innovation in DeFi, um, what about financial inclusivity and accessibility? We even talked about, you know, my grandma. She she definitely is not going to onboard to crypto um, without things like USDC. Um, so maybe we'll just talk about first, um, how's USDC actually promoting financial inclusivity um, and how can we leverage it to do so even more? Yeah, I'm happy to start with this. And it's something very near and dear to our hearts here. Like, you know, our, our mission is to, to increase global economic prosperity by enabling the frictionless exchange of value. I know it's a mouthful, but like, what is what does that actually boil down to? It's giving people around the globe more access to a digital dollar. It's it's like we're, we're putting the, the, the US dollar onto the internet and allowing anyone that has access to a smartphone and Wi-Fi to be able to access this. So we're already seeing insane adoption in emerging countries for folks that might not have a stable fiat currency that is hype, that due to hyperinflation, it no longer is the value that they expect it to be in 30, 60, 90 days. And those individuals are now putting their savings or a portion of their paycheck into USDC. And it's safe and reliable. And then when they need to, they can convert it back into that local fiat. And USDC is available in 190 countries now worldwide. We're hoping to continue to expand that. But what I'm really passionate about too is, is seeing more of the case studies, seeing more and hearing more from developers and, and platforms that are saying, hey, you know, I just got paid with USDC. I've never done this. I live in the UK and it, it, it took point, you know, four seconds in, in cents of fees compared to, you know, five to six business days and a 6% transaction fee. That's real life. These are helping real individuals solve real problems. This is not, hypothetical, big, fluffy statements. <clears throat> so that's what's something at, at Circle and myself personally, I'm really excited and proud to work at Circle and really excited about USDC's mission. 
and excited to push this forward. So I'll pass it along, but uh, that, that, that would be my take. Yeah, I can also add on here. Um, so in the Moonwell community, we are very, uh, we are very focused on financial inclusion and how do we give everyone in the world uh, the same tools that we all enjoy if we live in a country like the United States or in Europe where we have access to a really good banking system. Because in many parts of the world, we forget that people th that don't have access to banking systems uh, just have to deal with these uh, really expensive fees. And, you know, it's very hard for them to send money to their relatives that live in another country or, you know, remittances are, are a huge expense. You know, Western Union and others just charge exorbitant fees. And, you know, I can say that firsthand, you know, in the Moonwell community, we have contributors from probably a dozen different countries. In fact, two of our devs are in Brazil and we pay them every month from the Moonwell Foundation in USDC. And uh, they're able to receive their payment in seconds uh, with very low transaction fees, right? So um, it's a game changer in terms of being able to pay your offshore resources or all of the people that are working in this new kind of global economy. Because, you know, we have Moonwell contributors in Asia, in Europe that are doing localization, translating the app and website into different languages. And being able to pay all those people every month, you know, with USDC is really a game changer. And it wouldn't really be possible for us to even hire and bring the best talent into our community without um, having a capability like this, right? Um, we would have to be paying people in ETH or something if, if USDC wasn't available. But having a, like a stable um, form of value that isn't volatile like crypto is, like BTC and ETH can be, is super game changing in terms of you know cross border payments. And um, it also just aligns really closely with the Moonwell mission. Um, uh, and, you know, just to kind of give you a, a quick window into what our vision is at Moonwell, it's a world where finance and governance are powered by Web3. Um, I think uh, this is really, you know, we may not appreciate it as much if you live in a country with a good banking system, but if you um, have friends or relatives or uh, live in a country that doesn't have a good banking system, you will definitely appreciate uh, the, the superpowers that USDC gives you. Yeah, this is also near and dear to my heart. I This is such a crazy thing. Only maybe, let's see, four years ago now, I wrote my master's thesis and I was going to do it on um, like crypto remittances um, in East Africa. And it ended up there was just not enough out there um, to actually write something substantial and have that sort of evidence. Um, and now literally only four years later, right, we're in a completely different world. Um, I'll ask one more question and then we'll sort of wrap up here. Um, I don't want to be, you know, all sunshine and rainbows, right? What barriers to entry still actually exist for the widespread adoption of stable coins? I would say briefly, like, I think we all <laughs> in our world think, hey, you know, at a certain point in time, boom, snap, everyone's going to be on chain and never go back. And the reality is it's going to be a staggered, you know, it's going to be a longer marathon. It's going to take time. And we need to build out the rails for both the Web 2 and Web 3 side. So there's interoperability. So maybe a use case is someone that wants to hold and store USTC, but they can't buy their groceries yet with USTC. They can't order a taxi or an Uber or, or pay for goods with USTC yet. So they do need to convert that back to fiat. And us enabling and getting more partnerships out there for getting the best rails possible and the best rates, I think, for, from our perspective, is something we need to work on um, as part of it. And just realizing, hey, this this is going to be we're all taking a long term approach here. And like Visa and MasterCard building out the network of, of payments back in the 60s and 70s, we're looking at this from a multi-decade approach. So I think bridging the gap between web two and web three is really, really important as we keep our North star and, and, and focus to hopefully go completely on chain, but knowing that will take quite some time. I would echo that. I think there, there are still some limitations, obviously. I think some of these limitations can be bridged by things like USDC powered debit cards, for example, just the cards you can charge up. We've actually, um, a number of the offshore contributors to Moonwell that, that are outside the U S have been using these debit cards where they can charge them with USDC and they can buy things in their local country. And that's actually been, you know, super liberating for them because they don't have to worry about, you know, opening a bank account and like uh, using a central exchange and then converting their USDC back to their local currency. Um, so that's been super liberating, but it, there are still growing pains. That's going to take time for these things to evolve. 
Another thing that I think will um, take some time is just for the transfer speeds to to um, be reduced. You know, right now when you go between networks, it can be several minutes for transfers to happen, um, and I think that's just based on you know network finality. But there's probably some some interesting crypto technology that can improve that. Things like intents and things like that potentially can reduce those transfer costs or transfer time um, in terms of you know just waiting for the USDC to arrive. We really need to get that that experience down to like sub second so that you can you know buy a coffee and not hold up the line while you're making payments. Yeah, I think just to gonna add like one more thing there. I think um I think what USDC or like C C T V brings to the table uh, is is very addictive, it's very viral, it's very global. Uh, so my first hand experience has been when I have like shown people how quickly can uh, you know, like let's say in many across countries, uh people have kind of like gone back to it and started using it uh for that purpose, right? So I think this virality or the stickiness element for USDC is like super powerful and all we need to do on our end is kinda of like build stuff on top uh and get this thing integrated everywhere. Uh and like people will just think we are super confident. Great. Yeah, I can imagine us having, you know, another space in like literally six months, a year, and this being completely um, different and even more developed, which is exciting stuff. Um, okay, so as we wrap up, I'll just kind of ask one more question that each of you guys can answer. Um, so how does USDC Anywhere plug in um, to this mission of bringing the next billion people on chain? Um, I want to hear from each of you guys because, you know, each has a different perspective, right? Like Seamus from Circle, Babov from Socket, and then Luke from Moonwell. How's, how's it unique to your protocol, I guess? Great question, I guess. Well, first of all, you know, we really strongly believe in this mission of uh, giving powerful financial tools to everyone in the world. Um, and so the thing I think really empowers people and I think is going to be key to bringing a billion people on chain is is the ability to do more with your crypto. So for example, if you have other digital assets besides USDC, you know, things like Bitcoin and ETH, and I do think many people are going to start saving in those digital assets like Bitcoin, because it's just natural that, you know, you don't want your currency to be inflated away, but you still wanna buy things in the real world. Um, and you're gonna use a fiat um, crypto like USDC to do that with um, something that has a stable value. So I think just giving people the tools to borrow against their Bitcoin or against their savings and buy things in the real world, pay bills, is something we've always been really passionate about in the Moonwalk community. And I think that's ultimately where everything is going. You know, you shouldn't have to be, um, you know, a billionaire uh, to be able to margin against your uh, digital assets. Um, and I think that uh, DeFi and, you know, USCC gives us the potential to basically borrow against our digital assets in the same way that, you know, only TradFi um, sophisticated investors have had in the past. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, and I would say us as the asset issuer, we're, we're not very specific on any, you know, one use case, but it's more of what is the infrastructure that we can provide developers? And we think developers are the next big unlock for actually bringing a lot of those millions or hopefully a billion plus users on chain is like, what do these developers need to bring all of these users from web two applications on chain. And that's what we're excited to learn more about and hopefully continue to release more services and infrastructure surrounding that. But us as the asset issuer, we're just really excited to see what the new use cases are and what are the pain points that uh, folks feel like, hey, I can't integrate now because of this. And that's something I would say Circle as a whole is really excited about helping solve. Yeah, I think um, to be honest, I'd things um from my perspective i think um i think usdc anywhere is like a move it's a, it's a the pretty big movement that's just starting um and this effect will kind of like take over the ecosystem uh and that's our hope uh and that's what we are pushing for right uh people should get like people should demand this kind of ux um it it almost sucks um that people are kind of like pushed to like third party bridging websites today uh, that, hey, you know, if, imagine if someone land, lands on Moonwell, right? Uh, and they're suddenly kind of like prompted to go use this other website and then come back, right? 
that just means like such a huge drop off in usage. Uh, USDC anyway, uh, it's like one of the best approaches you can to kind of solve this problem where you move the onboarding into a pull based model rather than a push based model. So instead of a user landing on your website and you pushing them outwards, you pull them inwards such that a user comes to your website, they click a button and you pull their funds from where, or from like whatever chain they are on to, uh, more red, right? Uh, so in my opinion, we are just going to kind of like push, uh, this path ahead, work with other teams and kind of, uh, help, you know, then kind of build, uh, good UX like USDC. Amazing. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I studied before this, but I also learned so much on this space. I'm really, really excited about USDC anywhere and also ETH anywhere and anything anywhere, um, you know, going forward. So yeah, thanks so much, Luke, Vaibhav, and Seamus for coming on today. This was really enlightening and helpful. I'm sure we'll use this space um, going forward, and it'll also be an interesting artifact um, in the future when this is all way more developed, right? Um, so I'll just double click one more time on that circle is launching CCTP on Solana tomorrow. They're holding a space um, on their Twitter at Circle. Um, if you guys are interested, tomorrow at 12 p.m. Pacific time. That's what I've got to convert from. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much um, for talking with me today. 